Hello, friends. I'm Donna Clement Petrushka, and I am honored to invite you to something truly extraordinary, the Kim Clement Prophecy Vault. My father, Kim Clement, carried a unique prophetic anointing that allowed him to reveal God's heart and divine truths in ways that continue to resonate deeply today. His prophetic words, teachings, and worship moments are not just history. They are a living testament to God's ongoing work. Now you can gain unprecedented access to my father's entire digitized video archive. Every prophetic moment, every powerful teaching, every anointed worship session is now available to you in the Prophecy Vault. This treasure trove of spiritual wisdom and revelation is here for you to explore and be inspired by. But that's just the beginning. We've also enhanced the Prophecy Database, meticulously updating it with new video content and profound insights. This is more than just a collection. It's a living resource where you can delve into prophecies and see how they align with today's world. Plus, I'm excited to share that my dad's special School of the Prophets teachings are included, offering you deep, transformative lessons on hearing God's voice and understanding His revelations. As part of your membership, you'll also gain access to my prophecy blog, where I break down and analyze my father's prophecies, connecting them to current events. This blog will provide you with exclusive insights and a deeper understanding of how God's Word is unfolding right now. And we're offering something truly special, exclusive analysis sessions available only to members of the Prophecy Vault. These sessions will go beyond the surface, providing in-depth exploration of specific prophecies and their implications for today and the future. Your partnership is crucial. Not only will you gain access to these incredible resources, but you'll also help us continue the vital work of preserving, digitizing, and adding new Kim Clement material to the archives. Together, we can ensure that my father's prophetic legacy continues to inspire and guide generations to come. So, I'm inviting you to step into the Kim Clement Prophecy Vault. Let's embark on this journey of revelation together, and I can't wait to see you inside. Shabbat Shalom and welcome to Israel Update. Um, it's so great to have all of you with us. And obviously, there are so many things happening. You know, to be totally honest, Doobie's exhausted. He's in Israel right now, but he's tired and he still jumped on okay. here to join me. So, Doobs, thank you so much for being with me. Thank you for having me. I'm totally okay. Don't worry about it. Look at this guy. He just, you know, he's, he's, he's like Superman. So, Doobs, yeah. obviously... There's been crazy things going on this past week. You know, I know that intelligence came out just today. I read it, you know, in the Jerusalem Post about how the United States actively stopped Israel from going in to launch a preemptive strike on Hezbollah preemptively in October. You know, let's just talk about that for a second. Let's start off with the American problem when it comes to this specific set of wars, because Israel's fighting a war on seven fronts right now. And what's supposed to be its greatest ally, the United States, with this current administration, we're seeing that not only have they failed in a lot of ways, they actually have opposed Israel's progress. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Christy, we were, I think, the first people to speak about that already, where yes. the October 7th attack occurred. And on October yes. 9th, Israel wanted to launch a preemptive attack and uh, just take care of the story with the Hezbollah in Lebanon. This was our chance when we had the entire world behind us. Yes. Hezbollah started to shoot at us as in alignment with the Hamas. 
uh, they connected themselves and interlinked themselves together with Iran and all the other proxies as they stand by Hamas against Israel. And Israel could go and just wage an all-out war yes. and finish this situation. Everybody says, oh, no, but America, uh, uh, Biden, Joe Biden came to Israel to show solidarity. They sent the missile and the rocket carriers and the, and the jet fighters to Israel uh, to support us. And I was one of the first people to say they didn't send it to support us. They sent it to stop us. Yes. And literally, that's what they did. They literally came here because you have to know one thing. As a part of the strategic concept of the American regime, for years and years and years, it doesn't have anything to do with this current administration. Yeah. Within Israel, there are multiple air bases, other bases, where they have storages for American weapons and ammunition should there be a war against any of the American ally, uh, enemies in the Middle East and uh, some of their allies will be attacked. The U.S. doesn't yeah. have to wait days and weeks until all the uh, uh, supplies will hit here. Everything is right here on the ground waiting for their troops to come, open the storage and take it out and fight. America was afraid because one of the strategic accords between Israel and the Pentagon, no matter who's in charge of the administration, but it's between Israel and the Pentagon. If Israel is attacked and we have a situation, since we chose to put our eggs in the baskets of the U.S., and in return you promised that we conduct an open economy, a good democracy, a share intelligence and know-how and everything with the U.S., you will defend us when the time comes. And you will allow us to use these weapons and these yes. this arms and whatever is here until you will resend other stuff to support us and to refill uh, all these uh, yeah. storages. And Israel was about to go and do that because this was the idea of the war and we needed all these weapons. America said no. Israel said that's the agreement. So America sent literally armed forces here. To show the enemies of Israel as if they stayed within Israel, but literally they came here to say to Netanyahu, don't you dare. Shocking. And that's what we are saying now. The toll of all these Israelis that died in this war, all the citizens that are under attack. And look what's happening right now. When Israel finally decided to launch an attack over Lebanon almost yes. over almost a year that have been shooting us and attacking us and into our civilian centers, when we just started to take a toll from the Hezbollah, two days later, France, the UN, they the US, everybody's calling Israel for a ceasefire. They already agreed with the Hezbollah. Uh, uh, how convenient that the Iranian president is in New York right now. Yes. God knows if he's not hosted in the private house of Biden, having some drinks and canopies and talking mm -hmm. about the situation, how they did, they were defreezing their assets and money and everything, this administration to run. All of a sudden, everybody says to Israel, oh, oh, oh no, 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 you're taking such a huge, we have striking Hezbollah to the extent that they have zero communications. We have hit most of their chief commanders. This yes. is the time for us to go in and to push them away from the borders of Israel yes. and return our displaced citizens almost 100,000 of Israelis that have been displaced from their homes almost one year. That's time to bring them back. They're not going to be able to even celebrate the, the upcoming Jewish holidays because of this situation. And mm. all of a sudden, America, France, oh my God, they're in bed together now. UN, Gutierrez, all the big haters of Israel saying to Israel, no, 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 you have to stop. We agree, the ceasefire, three weeks. Three weeks will give enough time for Iran to rearm them. To rearm. Uh, for Turkey, Turkey to come into Lebanon as they promised and support Hezbollah. Yes. For Hezbollah to re regroup, to, to get more help from any other proxies who wants to come over and face Israel if we're going to take a, a ground attack over Lebanon. So how come the friends of Israel are the ones who are telling us, no, 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 you have to stop right now. And, and they give us conditions. You don't give conditions of ceasefire to the winning party. Yeah. They want to stop. They should surrender. Yes. Get the hell out of southern Lebanon. Yeah. Move their Hezbollah troops 
past northern of the Litani River, let our people be back home. Yes. But no, here's once again, and you know, Bibi was trying to send somebody else to give the speech tomorrow by the UN, but then insisted that he will come uh, because they want to hold him almost hostage in the yeah, end they do. Of, of the administration and put a bulldozer of pressure over him. So you would agree to this crazy ceasefire. But let me tell you the news from within Israel. Most of the government coalition parties are saying, and also opposition parties, are saying that Israel is in total agreement that we should not stop yes. until Hezbollah is pushed away. There was the poll that has been taken a, a place yesterday and today. Should Israel answer and, and agree to the ceasefire suggestions? 75% of the Israelis are against it. Sure. And that includes even the opposition who are always wow. against it. Everybody's pro fighting now with the Hezbollah. Yeah. That's it. And Israel didn't stop. Just minutes ago, before we came into this broadcast, Israel shot at the Dachia, the center of Hezbollah. And yes. they say that they have eliminated the head of the uh, drone unit of yes. Hezbollah now. So let's get another one to the collection of the 72 uh, virgins up there in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you hearing Doobie sound very like impassioned and I feel the same way because to us it's obvious. You look around and think, what level of stupidity are we dealing with here that people would sit here and put pressure on Israel to say, don't don't finish what somebody else started. Israel did not start this, but Israel has to finish it because the, the, the lives and the safety of their civilians, of their nation is at stake. And so this week, as you go out, I'm encouraging you, pray ceaselessly for the peace of Jerusalem and pray that the hearts of America will turn and vote for the people who are going to protect Israel when they're in power. I'm not legally allowed to say, do this. But I'm telling you, we want an administration in that does what President Trump did with the Abraham Accords, with saying, push me, see what happens. That's what we need. We need a strong America to say we are behind Israel no matter what. And so this week, as you go out, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray for Dubi and his family, pray for our friends, our brothers and sisters who are out there in Israel. Do not let this issue go away from your heart. You know, I have the Red Alert rocket app on my phone because every time the rockets go off, I'm reminded and I'm praying that God would protect civilians and protect the army and protect everybody who's in Israel, protect every Hundreds, hundreds, as we speak now. As right now. Starting today, already hundreds of rockets has been launched and fall. Yes. fell in onto Israeli grounds within in the last week thousands of rockets and yes. and drones and missiles were launched into Israel mortars and anti tank Everything. missiles and you name it onto Israel civilian centers you should come when the when the time will allow it and this war will finish and we will put together a trip to Israel yes. i promise i will take you to the northern frontiers of Israel like we used to go with Kim and pray yeah. over there, but now we will need to sow and support because half, if not three thirds, four, three quarters, two thirds, four quarters of towns and cities of Kibbutzim have been totally destroyed by the Hezbollah rockets. People has, I would say, over 50 to 60 percent of the people on the border towns has no homes to return to, no businesses. Even in the Golan Heights, Mount Hermon, uh, the only place in Israel when there's a ski uh, resort, they shot down the center of the ski resort, they shot down the cable car. They need millions and millions of dollars to try and restore it for the next season, should it even happen. They have been launching into centers of income, into chicken coops, into dairy farms, killing even the cows, even the poor innocent animals, Shocking. just to destroy and cripple our economy. That's what we have to pray for. Yes. Safety of the people and the resilience of our economy that already lost the ranking in the international banking uh, uh, credits. Israel is in the dire situation. It doesn't look it like because everybody says, look at Israel, they're shooting, they're fighting and this and that. But over half of the men in Israel under the age of 45 
are in active service, not providing for their families. 25% of the women under 30 are in active duties in this country. This mm. can cripple any economy. Yes, of course. And it's bad, Christy. It's yes. very, very bad. And that is why we have to support Israel no matter what. That is why we will never, ever stop supporting. So continue to pray. Come back. Watch us. Support us. Every Friday we'll be here at Israel Update. And we say thank you. God bless you. And keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I love you all. One of the things that we're promised about heaven is complete satisfaction. Being in the presence of Jesus at all times when He is the only true bringer of satisfaction because those things don't come the way we think they do. If you find yourself in a season where you feel like your colors have faded, there is a moment in time where the flamingo gets the color back. So be encouraged that after a season of giving, there is a time of reaping. The reality is, is that he is at work, but he's always a step or several steps ahead. And when we can have a, a, just a moment where we forget about ourselves for just a moment, inevitably we always realize there he is. He's always wanting not just to knock on our heart's door, but he wants to come in. He wants to sup with us. I'm excited to announce my all new mattress topper. In the times we're in, I wanted to bring you the best affordable mattress topper ever. So I took my two best technologies and combined them to make the ultimate mattress topper. And now you can get it for as low as $69.98. Queen size only $99.98. It all starts with my famous MyPillow foam that provides you that overall full body support. Second is the individual comfort supports that give you an amazing custom sleep experience. It's like it's made specifically for you. The queen size alone has over 14,000 comfort supports. This is the perfect mattress topper to improve any bed. New bed, old bed, your guest beds. Get them for every bedroom in your house. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get the all new My Mattress Topper for as low as $69.98. Queen size only $99.98. Don't delay. Order today. We here at the House of Destiny are partnering with you to let our, our viewers, of course, know about your company. It's Beverly Hills Precious Metal. Andrew, explain how that works. So I'll walk you through it right now. So if you go to bh-pm.com, right there on the homepage, you'll see a form that you could fill out. And that form is very important in letting us know how we can help you. So you just put in your first name, last name, email address, phone number, there's a section that says, how did you hear about us? And in there, put Kim Clement. And then there's a portion where you could write a couple of notes down on the bottom. Usually within about, about 24 to 48, 48 hours, we'll contact you by phone call. And then we'll go over everything with you. This isn't a high pressure deal. We always recommend that uh, if you feel uncomfortable, take a step back, pray about it. You will gain the answers that you need by doing that and come back to us when you're comfortable. 